<sighs> All right. Um, it is Tuesday night. It's six oh eight, um, and we're gonna prep for some Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, not a game that we're running tonight, but a game that we're gonna run in the future. Um, says September. More likely, it's probably gonna be October. Um, either way, it's gonna be a spooky gothic horror campaign. This is like our tenth week, I think, of uh, building a world. Uh, we're building a world from scratch and um, coming up with uh, starting town, religions, gods, uh, cosmology, uh, the whole thing, the whole thing. So we've covered a lot of ground so far, and uh, according to our notes from last time, which I know this document is turning into an absolute nightmare, I am eyeballing uh, one note. I understand it's way more organized, especially for writers. Um, so I'll try to switch over to that when I get a chance. Um, yeah. So this is what we got right now, though. And we're going to make it work. So let's see. My notes down here at the bottom say, uh, flesh out the region around the starting town, flesh out all of Vone, which is this center area, and then each of the four realms plus one city. Then we go to a second pass on the races, and then we dig into the classes. Um, so that's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, a note on this, I also want to explore Grim Hollow Transformations. Want to add that in there? And... Hmm... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The new Castlevania coming out. Got me talking to some people about Castlevania. And one of the things that I love about Netflix Castlevania is... The first time Trevor kills a big monster. Like a real huge monster. Like, like a giant-sized monster. There's so much blood. Uh, it just, like... It's like a hot tub exploded, right? It's just blood. Just everywhere. There's guts everywhere. The creature's body becomes terrain. I really want to explore that um, moving forward. I already have an idea for how we could do it in Foundry. Um, I could create a spell effects token macro that when you click it, it turns the miniature into like a pile of guts. So we could have a very gory game, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then I could click another button and it would actually make like blood spatter out from the pile of guts and so we could have this like combat could be super duper gory so i mean i feel like for a gothic horror game that's not the wrong way to go i also like the idea of big monsters becoming increasingly more difficult terrain um so i want to start exploring combat options uh beyond um 5e and gg systems so things like um, unique weapons and fighting styles and also um, 4E inspired uh, terrain features, which we could dig up the uh, or dig out our old 4E books and kind of harvest stuff for that. Because again, I want. I want the fights in this campaign to be set piece fights. So that's what I'm looking for um, from the combats. I want them to all be, you know, purposeful, right? I don't just want to have a bunch of random encounters. I, I want I want every fight to be meaningful. I want every fight to be exciting. Um, I want to make sure that every one of them has some very scripted, almost video gamey feel to it. Um, I want to build them around like the composition of the party uh, and create weaknesses that are exploitable by key members of the party. You know, like, I don't know, thoughtful, thoughtful combat encounters. Um, I'm kind of guilty of just throwing what I think is cool um, at people and then kind of hoping for the best. A uh, much more Matt Coville approach right now to encounter building. I'm like, well, this would be dope as fuck. And then we just throw, I don't know, like six boulets at once against like a fifth level party and you're like eh, hope they live guess we'll find out um i kind of want to be a little bit more thoughtful about encounter building for this campaign so that's something that i want to explore as well um but for now 
going down to Silver Fall itself. Um, I did not make a, uh, let's see, I did not make a map of the town, uh, but we do have a small map of the region here. And uh, we came up with cool names using name generators and uh, surrounding towns, and that was kind of cool. I don't know if I want to dig into Silverfall on stream, uh, because there could be people watching this that will eventually want to play in this um, adventure path that we're working on, and I don't want to give too many spoilers away. Um, also, sometimes I just like to make maps by myself, like off stream, because it's super relaxing for me. Um, so let's go ahead and I guess start working on Vone itself, which we did start to do. Um, we came up with a name for Tamsworth uh, and Eelry, and then that was kind of where we left off. So uh, keeping in mind that everything in this world is influenced by um, the Dreadlords and therefore neutral regions like Vone are going to take on the properties. Hey man, what's up? Uh, neutral, neutral area like Vone is going to take on the properties of its neighbors. Um, so when we're designing Vone, we need to keep that in mind. So in the center of Vone is the Chelsmar Depths. So that is the center of the city. Or not the city, of the of the region. It is the Chelsmar Depths. And this is essentially the only like real big body of water. There is no ocean, right? So um, we've got a smaller lake up here. Uh, we've got a dam, a dammed up river right there. Uh, we have an artificial river that is fed by a essentially a floating a floating sea uh, of, of water from uh, the elemental plains. And then we just have um, a mountain spring situation uh, up here. This might be turned into a lake. I'm not 100% sure. Um, so there's not a tremendous amount of water to deal with. So anything related to water is going to be here. Now, you might think like a lake... I guess we're not going to have any ship stuff. We're not going to have any seafaring stuff. Um, you underestimate lakes, I think. Um, in the American Midwest, they have great lakes. And until I saw the lakes for myself, I did not understand how great they were. Um, they are so great that you cannot see to the other side of them. You may as well be at the ocean. Um, they're big. Uh, if you want to go, you know, from Chicago to Canada... Um, you're going to need a boat. You're going to need a ship. Um, so very much uh, there can be pirates, uh, lake pirates, but pirates nonetheless. Um, there can be little islands out here in this lake. Um, there is a lot of potential um, for the Chesmar Depths. Given that the Chesmar Depths are the heart of Vone, uh, is the, yeah, I'm, I'm actually skipping over the starting area um like the more detailed parts of the starting area because i feel like we've hit that up enough and i'm just doing vone now as just a region so all right so since the Chels chelsmar depths are the heart of vone and vone is the heart of the world it makes sense that we uh i guess deal with the chelsmar depths first so uh let's see and yes again I know that um, if I were using like OneNote or any other program besides Google, I could have things much more organized. I understand. Um, I will work on that. I swear to God. All right. So Vone. All right. Vone is a neutral uh, territory sought after by the four dreadlords. In practice, the borders to Vone are ever shifting uh, and taking on or losing the traits of the neighboring realms. Uh, Vone um, is Let's see, we'll put the heart of Vone 
is lake uh, is its massive lake the Chelsmar depths the lake is fed by rivers from each of the four realms and is said to possess power and secrets both above and below its waters. Alright. Um, let's see. Vone is the most hmm, independent and well defined on and near the Chelsmar depths. Okay. Uh, let's see. What the Dread Lords refuse to acknowledge is that as long as the other three Oh, here. What each? There we go. What each dread lord refuses to acknowledge is that as long, and I mean, those of you who are good at typing and stuff, just forgive me. Um, as long as the other three lords still live and influence the land, uh, Vone can never truly be claimed. Uh, it represents everything that could be uh, the promise of dominion and the taste of expansionism. But all of those feelings are fleeting. For Vone is a land eternally contested. Much like the souls of its denizens. There we go. I think that's pretty good. What each dread lord refuses to acknowledge is that as long as the other three lords still live and influence the land. I should put instead of the other three, as long as uh, any rival lords still live and influence the land Vone can never truly be claimed it represents everything that could be the promise of dominion and the taste of expansionism but all those feelings are fleeting for Vone is a land eternally contested much like the souls of its denizens mm. that's some good shit alright um, let's see so let's talk about the Chelsmar Depths all right, so, hmm, that's right. E everything that I'm working on in this is just effed. Uh, let's see. Get bigger. Uh, get spookier. We got some spooky font here. I'm sure there's some in the store. We'll use pirates, that's fine. And make it bigger. And there we go. All right, so the Chelsmar Depths, what are we dealing with here? Uh, so we know it is a big lake. Uh, how deep? No one knows. Islands? Many, most uncharted. Okay. Uh, fed by rivers. What? Are the rivers named? All right, it's a great question. What are the rivers named? So we have the Nibel territories, the Folka, uh, Tesfal, and Lena Tustani. So we're gonna need to generate some river names, and for that, of course, we go to fantasynamegenerator.com. Absolutely, just the greatest. Um, and let's see, we've got the Perfumed Run, the Serene Brook, 
the Sleeping Tributary, the Hudrath Canal. Hmm, kind of digging the Hudrath Canal. Not really digging the word Hudrath, but kind of digging canal there. Um, it implies that it was constructed. And who likes to construct stuff? <gasps> the constructs. So, there we go. Uh, so we need a cool name for that. Hmm. The White Creek. Oh, man. If that doesn't sound like something that the pseudo-Christians up in the Justinian's realm uh, would have, I don't know what else to tell you. So, White Creek. Pretty good. The Serpent Stream. Hmm. Okay, maybe. I mean, I'd love to do Serpent Trench because it'd be a huge shout-out to Final Fantasy VI. Um... But, not sure. What is a trench? I think it's like a canyon, right? Uh, let's see. Trench is... Um, dig a trench or trenches in the ground. Uh-huh. Border closely on, encroach on. Mm -hmm. That seems terrible. Um, that, that, that's the, Oh, a long, narrow ditch. Hmm. I mean, if they artificially constructed it so that their river could flow through the desert, that would kind of make sense. I'm kind of down for that. Uh, let's see. Let's get some other stuff here. Coral Creek, Tortoise Stream. What the hell is a rill? Hold on. Let's look up what rill is. A rill is a small stream, a shallow channel cut in the surface of soil or rocks by running water wow okay well i mean obviously these are all types of streams what is a beck a mountain stream hmm that might be kind of cool for the folka all right um the bursting rill the slumberous beck the sl slumberous beck kind of into that Kind of into slumber respect. So we have... We still need a word for the canal. Hmm. The Brazduff Canal? No. The Bonacaster Canal? Mm -mm. Mm, let's keep going. The Stern Channel. Um, the Lucent Creek. Ooh. Lucent Creek is even cooler than White Creek. I'll be honest. Um, the Lucent Tributary. Ooh, man. That actually sounds even cooler. Uh, we're going to get rid of White Creek, and we're going to put Lucent Tributary. The Gravelster Stream. What about the Gravelster Canal? Gravelster? Nah, still not liking it. The Middle Tree Greek Volt Folk? Nope. Vot, Vot Folk? That's hard to say. Um, hmm, let's keep going. Uh, Distant Brook, Bog Beast, Glistening, Tolham. Tolham Canal. Tolham Canal sounds pretty good, actually. Alright. Tolham Canal. Alright, let's see what we got here. Um, uh, boop. So, Tolham Canal, the Lucent tributary, the Serpent Trench, and the Slumberous Beck. So none of them are actually named rivers, which I guess isn't bad. Um, Because, you know, river's kind of basic bitch anyways. What about just the canal? Eh. I mean. Um, we could name the Dead River, though. That'd be kind of cool. Also, there wouldn't really be a canal anymore, right? Because the river would be dead. So, the... Hmm. Or is the whole thing... Like, how... We thought it'd be cool for them to make a dam. But, like, how are these guys in Tesfall... How are they trading with Vone if they don't have a waterway? I feel like they would they would turn the river into a canal so that they control the flow of the river, right? Like, that seems like... Their whole thing is 
changing things and gaining control of them through those changes, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That kind of that kind of makes sense. All right. So, yeah. Let's jump in here then. Uh, let's see. Name this dead river. This river is called the Toll Ham Canal. All right. And then we'll still need to name the dam. Oh, it's a real bad storm. Holy shit. So if the stream goes out, I'm in the middle of like, I don't know, like a typhoon or something. Like I can't even see out my window. There's so much rain and wind and storm. Um, so yeah, if this store, if the stream cuts out, I really apologize, but, um, good ambience, uh, for this. Yeah. All right. So the Lucent tributary is going to be up here and let's see, I guess we'll just copy and paste them words and then copy and paste these words. All right. And then we've got the serpent trench which I am, I am down for. Uh, let's see. So we'll copy this and put that right around here. See, by developing the central region, we are inevitably developing all the other regions, which is kind of cool. All right. And then this one right here is going to be the slumberous speck. All right. Cool. Uh, let's see. So it's fed by rivers. What are those rivers named? Good stuff. All right. So what kind of stuff is on the islands? Is there anything that people would know about on the islands? Uh, is there a settlement on an island in the lake? Uh, or is the lake too dangerous and settlements are only built on the shores uh, is there a dead settlement on an island in the lake that taught this hard lesson oh. something to think about uh, all right, and then we've got towns along the outside. So let's do uh, fantasy uh, name generator towns. All right, so let's see. We're going to do, um, there we go. Major cities. Okay. Um, Pran is just about the coolest D&D &D name for a city or town I've ever heard of. So that's a winner right there. Uh, Briar Glen, also a great name. Eastbourne. I like it. Uh, let's see. Killerth. Mm, nah. Middlesbrough. Um, Tenby, no, not really feeling it. Kirkwall, uh, Aylesbury. Mm, I like Bury. I don't know if I like Aylesbury. Pella's Wish. Kind of sounds like a dope, uh, dope name for a town. Uh, Axminster? Pff, fuck yeah. All right. Axminster. All right. Uh, let's see. Burnsley. I also like Burnsley. It's pretty good too. Man. Thank God for name generator. Alright. Uh, let's see. Bermuda Triangle in the lake. Uh, yeah. There needs to be the old settlements. So what is the old settlement called in the center of the lake? <gasps> what if we called it Crest Hill and there's a town called New Crest Hill? Which they felt was pretty pretty poor taste to do that. 
All right, I like that. Um, this settlement was called Crest Hill. Mm. Mm. It's also very silent. Mm. At Crest Hill. Yes, yes. Yeah, Pella's wish for a brothel or inn. That's a good idea. All right, let's see. We'll just put that in the kick ass name section. Oh, there we go. All right. Fandale is a good word or a good good thing too. Let's see. Fandale. All right. Let's um let's go back to the map. So we already have Tamsworth, so that's taken care of. All right. I like the idea of Pran being down here. So let's see what we could do about that. Copy pasta. There we go. Pran. Lovely. Uh, all right. And then we've got two more cities that we have to for sure have names. I mean, Eastbourne for the most Eastern one seems kind of like a no brainer. So we'll do that. All right. Nope, there's a U in there. Boop. Okay. Oh, damn. Damn, you trolling me, Dom. You trolling me. All right. Uh, wow. This is when I need admins to just get rid of Dom forever. Uh, all right, let's see. And then this northernmost one. Hmm. Hmm. New Crest Hill seems seems kind of cool, but also seems very defiant to to put that there. Um, but we're kind of into it. We're kind of into it, so we'll do it. Uh, New Crest Hill. If anybody's going to have the confidence and the audacity to build New Crest Hill, it's going to be people influenced by um, the Nival territories. So I feel like that checks out. All right. So the major cities then ended up being Timsworth, Pran, um, New Crest Hill. All right. Uh, Eastbourne. All right. So that means that these guys who did not make the cut, that did not make the cut, these are going to be large towns. Okay. So let's do this. All right. Larger towns. Okay. And Silver Fall is obviously going to be on this list as well. All right, so we'll go into our map and we'll grab these cuties right here. And these are large town symbols. And we need to figure out, we gotta plop some of these bad boys down. Um, how ballsy are these people? Um, are these? I feel like these large towns would be willing to be right on the border of these of these enemy realms. So let's go ahead. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, yeah, the storm's really bad. Uh, we'll put one there. That seems good. And we already have silver fall over there. Uh, let's put one right there at the edge by the river. Seems like a good spot. And people like to live near water. I don't know what to tell you. So does the southern river flow up? Absolutely. Yep, flows to the north. It's a unnatural river anyways. It was created by an elemental rift. So, um, I like the idea of a town that's trying its best to make it like out in the middle of nowhere. So that might be kind of cool. Um, we could put one like right here along the coast. It's big, but not too big. Okay. It's very hard to justify a bigger town being so far away from water, though. Like, Silverfall makes sense because 
there was a rich uh, like ore deposit there. Um, let's see. Hmm. Could have a... Well, you don't really want to have a lumber town unless you have a river to transport the lumber. So, maybe not there. Um, this kind of has, like... Right? It feels like it's kind of calling out for something right there. So let's put a let's put a town right there. And then for whatever reason, I kind of like the idea of a town fucking in the middle of nowhere on the border of this horrible place. Like they're just having a really bad time. Yeah, yeah. Like, I like the idea of a town that is existing and you're like, how and why? Why are you why are you even trying? Kind of thing. Alright. So let's see. Briar Glen definitely feels like it should be near um the Folka, right? Because you know, Glen, Woods, that kind of stuff. But we could change it instead of Briar Glen, we could change it to Briar Fen. And a fen is like a swamp. It's a peat accumulating wetland fed by mineral rich ground or surface water. It is one of the main types of wetlands along with marshes, swamps, and bogs. So what I'm thinking is we do Briar Fen and we make it this town over here that doesn't make any sense that it's over here by itself. And this is just a real swampy town. And maybe their claim to fame is, um, I don't know, like evil druidism or something. Um, and then that kind of keeps them on their toes with the test fall, like nearby. I don't know. I, I'm the most curious, honestly, about this town right here, Briar Fen. Uh, but we will try the other ones. So we got Fandale. All right who's led by um, Mistress Lynn. God damn it. And we're going to put Fandale... Uh, let's see. Hmm. Sure. We'll put Fandale south of Pran. There we go. Alright. See, Tom thought he was making a joke. But we're gonna make this an official part of this uh, of this campaign setting now. Uh, all right, then we got Burnsley. Uh, Burnsley. Hmm. Where should Burnsley be? Kind of like it right there. So let's do that. Uh, grab this. Put this down. Uh, Burnsley. Burns Lee? There we go. And punch that down. And let's see. We've got two more to name, but only one more name. So one of these guys has to be Axminster, which <laughs> I guess we'll make this Axminster. There we go. And we'll need to grab one more name for the one that borders the vampires. So we want something that's kind of spicy sounding. Uh, let's see. Everton. No, that's not spicy. Um, Yellow Seed. Islesbury. Oldham. No, 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 no. Um, hmm. Let's see. Alright, so we could do Italian Renaissance names and then just make it a town. That'd be kind of cool, too. Um, so we could call it Alamano. Alamano actually sounds kind of cool. Alamano. Welcome to the city of Alamano. Hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of digging that. Alright, so we'll do Alamano. Uh, robot? Alamano Calbi. Okay, thanks. Uh, here we go. I mean, should the town have a first and last name? That's kind of dope, too. I don't know. I mean, the region does. 
Lena Tustani, uh, but maybe the town can get away with just having a, a single name. All right. And then Alamano is the other major town. There we go. Now, oh, it would be some serious Ed Greenwood shit. Um, if we were to go in there and start uh, mapping out all of the smaller towns in the region as well, to the point of it being a little ridiculous. To the point of it being a little ridiculous. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the towns that we have just listed. And we're going to try and uh, make them a little more interesting. In the same way that we built um, Silverfall, uh, we're going to try and buff these guys out a little bit. Unlike Silverfall, we're not going to be completely procedural. We're going to let the procedural stuff guide us, but we're not going to let it control us. So, uh, let's get our friend Spectacular Settlements from Nord Gabes and uh, see what we could do. And also, um, I still don't have my stream robot set up to hype this shit, so I'll just put this into chat real quick. Um, cause Nord Games is sponsoring our streams now, so, you know, um, support them by their cool stuff. I use their treasure cards for all my campaigns, uh, and I use their other cards to build a lot of my encounters. All right, uh, let's see. We don't need a pre-generated town. That would be too easy. Um, uh, we do want to generate a town though. So let's see. Basic information, points of interest, um towns uh cities all right and then of course capitals hmm hmm let's see uh basic information government and high society all right so what of our i think pran should be the capital because the pran and von i feel like they just you know i feel like they just go together also, of all the different factions, I feel like the vampires have the most vested interest in Vone remaining independent and uh, thriving because they want to eat these people. And you take care of the animals that you are hus doing animal husbandry on. Uh, so I feel like I feel like the the Fey are a bit too mercurial, right? They they don't really give a shit what happens to the people of Vone. And the people to the north, they don't want the Vones to be independent. They want the, them to be religious zealots who worship and live the way they do. And then, of course, the Constructs just want them for parts. So of all the four factions, I feel like Vone would be most likely receiving aid and assistance from the vampires of the Southlands. So Pran is also located on the south side of the lake. Makes sense for them to be the capital city. Hmm. All right. So, let's figure out what the capital has going on. All right, Pran. We're going to do, hopefully, a little bit of a condensed list here. All right. Um, last time, we I rolled all the dice myself. I know there is a slight delay here on the stream, but if somebody would like to roll a D12 and just throw that number out into chat, I will use whatever numbers I see in chat um when i go to get numbers so um if anybody wants to just throw out numbers between uh i need numbers between 1 and 12 uh numbers between 1 and 10 uh numbers between 1 and 20 numbers between 1 and 20 uh, numbers between 1 and 10 <laughs> so yeah just throw out some numbers all right looks like we got a five let's go to the first table uh, maybe like preface what your role is for so I know like which wh which table to use it on. That would be good too. Um, all right, so five natural progression. The capital was originally a trading post with attracted enough business to warrant expansion. It managed to grow to the point where it held commercial power over the entire region. Well, that makes sense. Okay. Um, so we'll grab all that and paste that under Pran. Mm, mm. Thank you, PDF formatting. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Earth. Earth. Okay. 
And let's see, the next number I needed, uh, let's see, was a seven on, uh, let's see, that was origin table. Seven was for age. All right, cool. So it is old. It has been around for 300 to 1,000 years. That makes sense. All right. What else does the capital have going on for it? Size. What number do we have there? Oh, no. Oh, a 17 from uh, The Wandering Lynx, which if you guys haven't checked out The Wandering Lynx, it's, uh, it's an amazing uh, arrow uh, roleplay site for furries. Uh, the, the first two weeks uh, are free. Oh, wait. Hold on. I'm not supposed to talk about it. Never mind. Um, all right. So let's see. 17. It is large. It is able to support... A hundred thousand people. Holy shit. Well, okay. Large. 100k-ish. Peeps. Alright. And then let's see. Optional table. Um, the following table can help you increase or de decrease the amount of people for your settlement. Has structures to support. Uh, population capacity. Eh. 100,000 is pretty good, but what is the next number in here? Dom got a four. Double? No, we're not going to have 200,000 people. That's crazy talk. All right. Um, mostly because I don't want to build a city that big. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? Environment. Uh, we know that it's coastal because we put it there. So we don't need to roll on that table. Okay. And let's see. Outside the capital. Uh, what is going on outside the capital? Uh, let's see. The next number is a two. Uh, oh, but we needed a D hundy. Oh, I need two D hundy rolls. So make sure you type D hundred and then whatever number you got when you roll the D hundred. Oh, what? Uh, let's see. D hundred then D ten. Uh, I'm I'm having trouble. I took your 17 as a, as a D20 roll. Yeah. Oh, there we go. D173. Nice. Uh, okay. Outside the capital, 73. Family estate. A wealthy family's large estate is situated in the neighboring countryside. How much you want to bet? They're motherfucking vampires. You don't have to bet anything, because I'm telling you, they are vampires. Uh, all right. Awesome. Uh, let's see. What else is going on outside the capital? Uh, a 91. 91 is subterranean warrens. Something is under the capital. Below even the sewer system, if the capital has one. This could be the ruins of another city, the crude dwelling place of simple beast, or the residence of another active civilization. That is dope AF. All right. Um, we need a D6 roll. D6 roll. Let's let's see if a D6 roll shows up. It's got to be preface D6 and a number, so I know what it is. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, a four. Um, it is not known about. Oh shit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There we go. Nothing like reformatting. Uh, not known by city. <gasps> That's gonna be a plot point for sure. Holy shit. Um. All right. Stewardship. It is a leader among settlements. It could be an example of what to do or what not to do. All right. So we need um. We need a D20 roll. Need a D20 roll. Let's get a number between 1 and 20. Um, we're going to need, looks like, three D20 rolls. All right, D20 12. Let's see what we got. Um, adequate stewardship. Uh, the capital's fundamental elements are all taken care of relatively completely, but some room for improvements. Okay. Uh, let's see. Stewardship. I can see that. Vampire, rich vampires that run the city. They kind of care, but not really. 
Like, they do just enough to keep the humans alive and thriving, but not enough to, like, get too powerful. You know what I'm saying? Because you wouldn't want a rebellion or something. Um, oh, no. The general condition is dilapidated. Ah, things are dirty and in a widespread state of disrepair, though some token of effort might be made at cleanliness. Hmm. Okay. Poor Pran. Uh, Pran is dilapidated. Okay. Uh, which means run down in case future crash. It's like, what the fuck does that mean? Uh, let's see. And then finally, we got a D20 for 20. Fortification, extremely well fortified. The capital is surrounded by an imposing wall of wood or stone. Okay. Extremely fortified. I feel like Pran is kind of badass. Like, I've seen it in, like, a fantasy anime before. All right. I don't really need to get into so much detail with this other stuff. Uh, let's see. I kind of already have an idea for the leadership. I want it to be the rich vampire family that lives outside of the town. And they just sort of, like, control the town. Um, but, sure. Let's do a D-Hundy roll to see who the puppet leaders are. Yeah. D-Hundy roll to see who is the puppet leaders. Alright. And then... Government's priorities... Priority success... Lifestyle and residence... Man, this book is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, number of connections... Dang, Dom, you rolled a 1? Okay. Um, on a D-100? Uh, humanitarian. The leadership's goal is to do right by its people. Oh, that's the priority. My bad. Um, elected council. Okay. Alright. Yeah, I don't know how you could be dilapidated, but also care about your people. That seems kind of a little iffy. Um, the puppet leaders are an elected council. Prominent members of the community were chosen to lead the capital collectively. Well, then we definitely need to know if they get along. So we need a D20 roll. It's for leadership unity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Good point, Wandering Lynx. Good point. Uh, what book is that? This is uh, Spectacular Settlements from Nord Games, which I might actually have a link for the book. Hold on. Mm, let's see. Uh, let's see. Spectacular. There we go. Yeah, I actually have a link. If you use this link to go check out the book, it will make Nord Games very happy. So, there you go. Um, it is an awesome book for world building, though. It's like 500 pages long or some shit. Uh, 482 pages of world building tools. Uh, I am loving it. Alright, we got a D20 for a 7. Uneasy. Something feels off, but it may be that someone's just having a bad day. Ooh, I like that. Um, uneasy. Suspect that um, their patron might not have the city's best interest at heart. Cool. Okay. Um, and priorities, priority approach, uh, priority success, lifestyle. Uh, let's see. I kind of want to just pick one off the table. Governing priority. Um... I think they just want it to stay successful, so it would be control. Absolute control of, is of utmost important. Everything is made to maintain a grip over the people. I feel like that makes sense. They spend all of their money on propaganda campaigns and uh, military police and all that jazz to make sure that they stay in charge of the humans within the city. In exchange, the city itself is successful, but maybe the lives of the people are not that successful. 
Um, how do they do it? Are they very aggressive? Are they peaceable? Um, hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, this is entities outside of the capital. I want to say that Pran is peaceable. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of feel like they wouldn't want to start too much of a fight, but they actually need to be strong enough to defend themselves. Um, but I feel like as a merchant-based community, um, a trading post that's turned into the capital city, they would probably favor peace and diplomacy. All right, favors peace and diplomacy over warfare when possible. All right, priority success. How successful is the leadership been in pursuing its priority? Um, hmm. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Could somebody give me a D20 roll for this? Uh, let's see. I think the lifestyle, it was definitely going to be the rich and well-connected live very well. Um, big disproportion uh, between wealthy and poor. Lots of capitalism. Um, origins based on merchantilism and trade post. All right. Hmm. I'm digging the city. I'm digging the city hard. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Okay. I'll go ahead and just roll the 20 real quick. Oh, wait. Eight. Cool. Um, so what is their success? Successful. Okay. So they are successful at controlling the population. Excellent. I feel like I know enough about this place now without having to explore um, all the other stuff that's going on here. Uh, I could always, if this does become a location that will be used in the campaign, um, I could always come back and um, flesh it out a little bit more. Uh, but this is pretty cool. Noble visitor, or uh, notable visitors, um, how the military is set up, how the nobility is set up. Um, relationship with the people, how the community is set up. Oh, fantastic. All right. So let's jump back out uh, to, uh, let's see, districts, extra intrigue. Hmm, what's extra intrigue? Um, what has happened to or in the capital recently? Oh, man. All right. Let me see. 19. Someone in the capital has developed new urban farming practices, which have been slowly catching on. Man. Um, I mean, they're literally farming human beings, so I guess that's kind of an urban farming thing. Mm. Uh, noteworthy officials. Okay, okay. Um, Alright, so let's, let's go back a little bit. And then we'll handle some of the cities. All right. Tamsworth is right next to the starting town. So we need to get a feel for Tamsworth. Uh, basic information. What is the origin of Tamsworth? So we need a D10 to determine the origin of Tamsworth. Uh, so let's see. Uh, give Chad a sec if they want to throw a D, a 1 to 10 in there. Uh, otherwise, uh, we got priority for what they're after, uh, which is another, which is a D6. Okay. And then we got age, size, optional table, you know, similar stuff. Outside the city, what are they focusing on? Uh, let's see. Caravan community, a nomadic group of people have taken to living in the surrounding land nearby. Does the city's leadership have an issue with this? Event grounds, make sure there's a... no, 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 I'm okay with rolled up. Uh, da, da, Dom gave me a D8, though. Let's see what we got. Um, 
origin of this place is prison. The site was originally a colony for criminals. Uh, over time, events transpired, allowing the place to become a legit city on its own. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay. All right. So, Tamsworth was originally a prison. Uh, let's see. Hmm. <laughs> There we go. Uh, let's see. Boop. Boop. All right. So originally a prison. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, let's see. Maybe we'll just cherry pick for this one. Uh, so it used to be a prison colony. Now they are trying to... Mm, I'm kind of curious. Uh, work on trade. Okay. Checks out. I mean, they're on the they're on the lake. That makes sense. Um, how old are they? Hmm. Uh, they are also old. Okay, it makes sense that these towns would be the oldest because they're furthest away from the other realms or whatever. Uh, let's see. It is very very large town. Got a net twenty. Okay, which is kind of fun to have a nice big town um, or city right by the uh, starting location. It's kind of cool. And let's see what else we got. Uh, what's going on outside of the city? Uh, hmm. Okay, medical camp. It's interesting. Uh, let's see. Nothing. Nothing. And makeshift settlements. A large mass of hovels, lean-tos, tents. Hmm. I like the idea that um, outside of the city is a nomadic camp. I guess it wouldn't be nomadic, but um, let's see. A camp city of lycanthropes who not being allowed to own property within the city walls have built their own um, settlement right up against the city itself mmm I like that um, the city would have removed these creatures uh, long ago, but uh, there are many talented healers, uh, druids, and spiritualists amongst them. And now a tentative peace has been established. In many ways, the tent city is simply another district of Tamsworth. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. All right, so we have the capital of Vone. Um, we have a major city that is located next to our starting town. We know more about the lake that makes up the heart of the city. Uh, and we have the capital city itself really well fleshed out with a lot of awesome points that we can build from um, as needed. We know the other larger towns and cities in the region and can slowly but surely work through those as well. Um, probably off stream um, because at a certain point I just have to like you know um, I just have to grind a bunch of the stuff out because I mean how many how many random tables uh, do, do people really want to watch somebody roll on um, yeah so I like 
I like where this, this is going. And just the towns that we've done so far for Vone, I, I think we will do Briar Fen though on, on stream. That'd be pretty good. Um, but where we've what we've got so far with Vone, I definitely feel like merchantalism is their biggest strength. So I'm gonna go up to that. And then that needs to be followed up with I'm gonna say agriculture, because none of the other regions essentially have that rich, fertile valley situation. So we're going to have a section here real quick. And we're going to put major traits of Vone. Uh, and we're going to put, uh, let's see, uh, rich soil for agriculture. Oh, I think that's dinner. Uh, so, yeah, rich soil for agriculture. And let's see, waterways. For trade, um, mostly neutral politically allows for diplomacy, free travel, and trade. Okay. And we'll also put a melting pot of all races and cultures. Okay. Um, overall, uh, let's see, overall Flava Flav, let's do um, more traditional, uh, we'll go JRPG uh, fantasy setting with gothic horror tossed in see also netflix castlevania uh jrpg euro fantasy there we go um let's see also castlevania okay cool and that's kind of the theme and flavor um towards borders uh mix and blend this bb vanilla fantasy culture with the flavors of the neighboring realms i dig it all right so now we have a good grip of what Vone um, is, what Vone is all about. Oh, and that is it for me. All right. So uh, we got a lot of good building done. We have a good grip on Vone and um, the settlements of Vone, the flavor of Vone, the purpose of Vone, um, the interest of other factions in Vone. We slowly are building the world out in a different direction. So I guess the next that next week we will want to dig in to one of the other four realms. Um, obviously, these dudes to the north might be the simplest one to start um, doing, but we know that the vampires have a vested interest in Pran, and they um, they sort of take care of the people of Vone more than the other races. Um, Falka could be very interesting. I guess we'll just have to see what we're in the mood for next week. But we will choose one of the four um, outer realms, and we will develop that uh, a bit more next week. So Capital City, and then maybe some features, themes, and overall um, stuff for that area. All right, I don't have a I don't have a game tonight. Um, there's no rhyme tomorrow. I will be doing uh, a shitload of prep for the Friday miniseries tomorrow instead. So I'll be back at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. And depending on how much prep we're getting done, I might just prep from 6 until I feel like stopping. Um, but we're going to be doing a lot of Foundry VTT uh, prep, a lot of custom monsters, populating of maps, building of maps. So that's what's going on tomorrow. Uh, Thursday, prep for uh, Skull and Shackles. And then running skull and shackles uh so if you're interested in any of that stuff i will see you then um otherwise enjoy your week 
and I'll see you next time.